genius brains. We look at people who are seemingly more intelligent than we are, and we wonder how can we achieve that level of success? What can we do? What actions can we take in order to rise above and take it to the next level? In this video, I'm going to give you some strategies that you can follow in order to take it to the next level, in order to learn anything. If you follow the techniques that I discuss in this video, it's going to help you. Even if you only follow some of the things I discuss, it's going to help you. Set clear goals. Knowing what you want to learn and why can help keep you motivated. If you set goals and you understand why you're trying to reach those goals, whenever you reach a hiccup, it will keep you motivated. We all know learning is super hard and you're going to encounter challenges. So by having clear goals and having reasons for those goals, it's going to keep you motivated in times of struggle. Embrace curiosity. The desire to learn new things is wonderful. If you care about learning, you're going to learn more. It's just a fact. If you're interested in mathematics, you should pursue mathematics. If you like philosophy, you should pursue philosophy. Do what you love. As cliche as it sounds and as unrealistic as it may sound sometimes, it's worth doing because people do better at what they like. People like what they're good at. And so when you embrace your curiosities, you're able to expand your horizons and just absorb new information so much easier. And you will struggle because learning is a challenge. It's not easy. There are no shortcuts. But again, these tips will help you. And if you follow them, you will succeed. Engage in deliberate practice. By practicing the skills you want to learn, you are going to get better. This might sound obvious, but let me give you a concrete example of something that people do. And this is something that I've done in the past. Let's say you want to learn a specific topic in mathematics that's very challenging. You might tell yourself, hey, I don't really have the prereqs to learn topic XYZ. So you go back and you learn something easier, something that's in your comfort zone. It's good. You review the material and it increases your foundational knowledge, but you're still running away from what you're trying to learn. You can't run away from what you're trying to learn. You have to learn it. You have to practice. You have to deliberately practice. So focus on what you're trying to learn and actually practice problems doing that topic. For example, if you're trying to learn advanced calculus, you want to be doing advanced calculus problems, not basic calculus problems. That means you have to jump into the proofs. You have to get your hands dirty and it's going to take some work. Be patient. Mastery takes time. It takes time to get to that genius level. As much as we all want to learn, it's important to be patient. And I say that because you don't want to overdo it. Yes, you have to practice like crazy. Yes, you have to deliberately practice what you're trying to learn. And yes, you should make it a daily habit, but you don't want to burn out. So remember to take a step back and take your time if you're feeling any type of burnout. You want to be consistent in your learning process. Find a mentor or a coach. This is one that a lot of people don't do. And it's challenging. It's not easy if you're a person and let's say you're trying to learn mathematics and you're looking for a mentor or a coach. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have to find maybe a professor that you can go see or maybe even hire a tutor. It is not easy. Thankfully, we have the internet so you can watch videos and that can kind of serve as your mentor, but there's nothing like having a person in real life to help guide you. And sometimes, unfortunately, that costs money, right? Tutors aren't free. As a concrete example, I have a friend who's in really great shape. He's a power lifter and he wants to learn to box. So he decided to hire a professional trainer, a boxer to teach him how to box. And he's taking it to the next level. That mentor is pushing him. So he's able to learn how to box and able to get better. The same is true for any subject. If you have someone that's teaching you a new language or teaching you physics or helping you learn mathematics, it is life changing, but it's not easy. It's going to be hard to find a mentor. And a lot of times mentors aren't free. These people are experts and their time is valuable. And so their time equals money. So something to keep in mind, but I thought I'd throw it out there because it's something you can do to help take it to the next level. Read widely. That's right. You want to expand your horizons. For example, let's say you're trying to learn to be a programmer. It's still important to learn other subjects. It really opens your mind. Even reading a fiction book can give you ideas and perspectives that you didn't have in your life. 
So by opening your mind to learning everything, it's just going to make you a better person and a better human being all around. You'll have different perspectives. And so when you encounter challenges in life, you can use your knowledge. You can use what you've learned to make the best possible decisions for yourself and for those in your life. Use active recall. This one is extremely important, especially for mathematics. Since the first time I started learning mathematics in college, active recall was something I practiced every single time. So by active recall, I mean whenever you're working on something, let's just take math as an example, and you don't know some knowledge, try to remember it. Try to tap into your brain and recall that knowledge. As a simple example, I remember learning the formula for slope. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The change in y over the change in x. And every single time I did a problem, I would write that formula down. Why? Because my teacher said to do it, and he was right. He had experience and he knows how to learn and he passed that knowledge on to me and now I'm passing it on to you. Every time you're focusing on mathematics and you don't know what to do, always try to tap into your brain and see if you can remember the knowledge. Then what you do is you cheat, you look a little bit at your notes or the internet or your book and then you get just enough information so that you can continue with the problem and then you keep struggling and keep trying to use that power of active recall to tap into your brain. I feel like it makes you learn things. It's certainly how I learned all the mathematics I learned. Active recall. Exercise regularly. Exercise can make a big difference in how you feel mentally, which can directly affect how well you learn. Your mental state whenever you're studying is extremely important. If you're in a bad mood, if you're distracted, or if you're unmotivated, you're not going to be able to learn as much as if you were feeling great, motivated, and just ready to go. Exercise can give you that feeling. So if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you can't study and you can't focus, maybe you just need some exercise. That might be all you need. That might be the one thing that's going to make a huge difference in your learning performance. Try to incorporate that into your learning, right? Try to get some physical activity. It will make a difference. Make learning engaging. That's right, engaging. And you can do that via self-study. As a concrete example, let's say you're trying to learn calculus on your own. You can go out and buy one of those big, thick calculus books, and then every day just pick a small goal. Try to make it through one section a day. You might be able to do it. You might not be able to understand everything every day. That's normal, but you're going to progress. And by creating that daily habit and by gamifying the process where you know you have to like get through that one section, it's going to make it more fun because in 10 days, you'll be through 10 sections. In 30 days, you'll be through 30 sections. In 60 days, you will be through 60 sections if you're actually able to keep it up. I'm obviously making it sound much easier than it is. You're going to get stuck. You're going to encounter challenges. Learning is hard, especially learning calculus on your own. But if you follow the rest of the tips in this video, it will help make your journey much more enjoyable and much more successful. Teach others. Teaching others is one of the best ways to learn. It really is. I remember when I first started teaching, I had to teach very, very basic math classes. And I was coming right out of graduate school, so I had all this advanced mathematics knowledge in my brain. All of a sudden, I had to really tone it down and teach really basic math. I found that it was really fun to go back and review all these old math topics. And I also found that it really strengthened my mathematics. I became really good at algebra. I became really good at calculus. I mean, I became a calculus master by teaching calculus. Taking calculus in college did not make me a calculus master. It made me good at calculus. But teaching calculus made me a master. When you teach a subject, you become really good at it. As a concrete example, if you have a professor who's teaching, let's say, real analysis, chances are they are a real analysis master, or at least I hope so, because when you teach, you become really, really good. So how can you incorporate teaching into your life and into your learning habits if you're not an actual teacher at a college or a high school? Well, what you can do is you can teach your friends. You can go to study groups and you can teach them. And it really helps. Not only will you help other people, but you're going to help yourself because you'll learn through teaching. You'll also make really good social connections that might last for the rest of your life. Again, teaching others is extremely beneficial and I encourage everyone to try it. You will be surprised at how much you can learn when you teach other people. There's something about talking about mathematics and writing mathematics on a board that really, really helps you retain it. If you have to explain the mean value theorem to someone, it just makes you know it so well. You know it by heart. You can walk into a room and you can just spit it out. 
To get to that level, you really, really should start teaching. Learn to manage stress. Whenever you're feeling stress, try to be mindful of that fact. Tell yourself, hey, I'm feeling stressed. This situation is not good. I'm having these thoughts. I need to throw these thoughts away and focus on what matters. Focus on the now. Focus on what you can do about the situation right now. That's really all you can do. So when you're feeling stressed, try to really just throw it away. I know it's hard. Stress is one of those things that affects all of us. But in reality, all you can do is what you can do now. So if you have some situation that's really out of your control and it's really hampering down your learning and it's causing you just tons of stress, good luck to you. And remember, focus on the now. Focus on what you can do and realize that a lot of times you can't control those situations. Keep on learning. Stay consistent. This is what separates people who succeed and people who don't succeed in various things. Being consistent is an extremely difficult skill to maintain because you have to do it every day. Most people, they'll start a study program or a workout program and they'll do it for a couple days and they burn out. The best way to stay consistent is to have good reasons for what you're doing. Again, set those clear goals so you know why it is that you want to learn a new language or why it is that you want to learn philosophy or why it is that you want to become an engineer. Whatever it is you're trying to do in life, know why you're trying to do it. And that's going to keep you motivated when you encounter adversity in the learning process. And we all encounter adversity. It's difficult. It's challenging. In fact, I always think that whenever you're sitting down and you're trying to learn something and you have that really like uncomfortable feeling where it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to write. That's learning. That's you starting to learn. That's that feeling. I'm getting goosebumps now, but that's that feeling you have, that struggling feeling. Once you squash that feeling, once you overcome that feeling, then you've learned. Because think about it. If you sit down to do a math problem and you don't know how to do it and you have the pencil in your hand, you're not going to know what to write. But once you know what to write and you know what to do, then you know it. So if you can get through that phase, that, that struggle phase, that's called learning. Another tip for staying consistent is to not overdo it. Again, this is one that is super, super important. I recommend, let's say for mathematics, 30 minutes a day more if you want, but don't overdo it, right? Try to find balance in your life. Don't overdo it. If you can maintain a healthy schedule where you can incorporate learning into your life and still keep everything else in your life intact, that's the way to go. And it's okay to overdo it sometimes. It's okay if you have a feeling where you just want to study every day, all day for several days, but you're going to burn out and be aware of that. And if you do burn out, if you want to stay consistent, just revisit it the next day and just cut back your study time. Again, focus on consistency. Make it a daily habit in your life. When you make learning a daily habit, it's going to change your life. Genius brains. You can learn anything. You really can if you put your mind to it. Hopefully after watching this video, you can do better. You can go out there and you can learn whatever you want to learn. Do you have advice for people watching this video? People read the comments. And so when you leave constructive comments, it really, really helps other people. There's a lot of people on this channel from all over the world learning all kinds of things. So anything you can leave in the comment section that's good can help those people. I hope this video has been helpful. And if you're not a subscriber and you're still watching this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want. Good luck. Take care.